Hello, Elise. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. How about you? I have a lot on my plate right now, but I'm good. Oh, that's good. I'm actually uh, had been experiencing a lot on my plate, but I have one more event tomorrow and a training next Friday, and then I get a little bit of a break. Oh, good. Are we the only ones here? So far, yeah, we're, we're uh, a minute early, so. Oh. Okay, oh, here comes, uh, I don't recognize. Yeah, it's Athena from the town clerk's, uh, oh, hi. the town council's hi. clerk, I should say, yeah. Ah. Hi, so I'm going to, hi, I'm going to bounce out right at one again, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, that's all right, I think that we, we have a pretty light agenda, so I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be done well in advance of one. Okay, it's just a crazy month, so yeah, um, yeah, be good. Ah, yeah, I saw the pictures that got sent from oh, uh, from, from Jim, yeah. Oh, they look awful. Yeah. Yes, that's a lot of you know, a lot of that looks very much like my walk down Amity Street to visit my folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very similar. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully yeah. he will be joining us. That'd be good. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, Myra can't be there, be here. Now, so Myra actually should be here. We changed the meeting from Tuesday to Friday to accommodate oh, her. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. So I'm expecting her. Um, okay. And um, I know that I spoke with Jim yesterday. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there are, I don't, I don't have any emails from them. So hopefully they're logging in. As yeah. We speak. It's pretty easy to get on here, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oof. It looks like we're going to have quite the weather day today. With Ugh, thunderstorms expected. I'm not looking forward to, I love thunderstorms. I'm one of these idiots that goes out on my balcony and cheers. <laughs> my neighbors laugh at me because oh, there she goes again because I'm going yeah louder yeah I'm weird like that because I just wow. love thunder so I don't want to be out in them mm -hmm. but I love to watch them I don't like lightning yeah well I'm, I'm happy for, for the rain for my garden mm -hmm. so that is always a good thing I'm happy to get rid of some of this pollen it's been killing me mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm not looking forward to next week, though. Yeah. So I have a message from Saren that she mm -hmm. says that she, oh, oh, you know what? Let's see. It looks like there are a bunch of people. There's Saren. I can promote her to a panelist. She could hear us, but we could not hear her. So ah, I don't even see she her. She should be uh, coming. Yep. Pick coming her. in. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Well, it's There's her picture, Sam. but not her. There she goes. Hello. Yeah. All right. Hi there. Hi. I'm Hi. Now. <laughs> uh -huh. I could I'm hear you so well, but I wasn't there. So yeah. I'll make so it to uh, gallery view. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're still waiting for a few others, and thanks for sending that the email because um, <clears throat> we have I don't you know we don't have Ian or Cody or Jim or uh, Myra, no. yeah. So we don't have quorum. <laughs> no, we don't. No, yeah, we have a guest. Yeah, yeah, we have two guests. Yeah. Oh. Well, you sent reminders that it is you did. rather than Tuesday, it is this Friday, so. Oh. Uh, yeah, I got two reminders. It's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. So we'll hold out for a minute more, and I can actually try to email those guys and see if um, if I can just nudge them a little bit. I wonder if they have the same thing that I had, because it says global. I'm connected through global network, whatever that huh. is. I didn't get that. And I'm operating through an iPad. Maybe it's different. Well, um, you got in through the attendee link, which I'm not sure why. Yeah, I always get in. Mm -hmm. I logged in through the uh, uh, link you gave on the agenda. Right. Okay. So that agenda uh, link is for the uh, attendees. Oh. Um, the, oh, here's Myra. So we're getting there. there. Is. Yeah. Hi, Maya. Hello. The link that you sent this morning. Hi. Every time I try to join early, I just sit there. And whenever it starts, it never includes me. Mm -hmm. So I have to go back out every time. I have to keep going back out to see if I can get in. And finally, I did. Good. That's <laughs> sort of nuts. I don't really get it. <laughs> Got a lot. Yeah. You said so oh, Cody is in. Okay. So we have the quorum. We have Cody, Sarah, and Elise, and me. Do we have Jim? Do we have Ian? Not yet. No. Okay. But you, you do have Cody, so you have a, a quorum. Okay. We have a quorum. Yeah. So next. So, right. Should we wait another couple minutes or should we start? Have you heard from either of them? I have not, but I just sent them an, an email reminder to um, that we're waiting. So, okay, it would be good if we had more than four people. Yeah, I mean, and I did meeting? speak with Jim um, yesterday. Okay. Well, he might be having trouble getting into. Mm -hmm. I always seem to have trouble getting into this meeting. I don't know why. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'll just ask, Athena, are you pressed for time or could you wait a few more minutes? I can wait a few minutes. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. So Athena, yeah. congratulations on your new job, which I'm very sorry you got. <laughs> um, there was I some you leave. There, the, the 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 reporters where they were very eager to jump on that story and it's it's uh not true that I'm leaving. I'm, I've decided to to uh, pass on that opportunity and stay with the town. Uh, oh, wow. They had you gone. I oh know. I know the, the select board in Montague had authorized the assistant town administrator to enter contract and negotiations, but I hadn't signed a contract or anything. So it was a little bit of a premature. Oh, wow. Well, article. Um I'm very glad that you were affirmed and got an offer and that you didn't take it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. I read that and I said, oh my God, that is all we need. <laughs> all right. Hey, hey, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry. We're not Still recording deeply. yet, correct? We are recording, yeah. Oh okay. no. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's Sorry. Our, this is um, not... Nothing inappropriate has been said. It's much easier to set it for automatic recording rather than for me to forget to hit the button. Um, with that said, I uh, it's been a minute or two start. since I yeah. sent. Yeah, so let's get started. Okay. I, I'll read the. Um, okay. The Disability Access Advisory Committee will meet virtually on Friday, June 14th, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access, access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So. Okay, so this is uh, June fourteenth at eleven thirty something. I don't know precisely what time it is. Eleven thirty-five. Um, and this is eleven forty. Eleven forty. Okay. 
Yeah. This is a meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee in Amherst. Perhaps the last meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. We'll find that out later, I guess. Um, and um, we need roll call. So, uh, Elise, are you here? I'm here. Saren, are you here? Yes, I am. Cody, are you here? It looks like he's here. Here. Great. Okay. Thank you. We hear you. And I'm here. And um, so the first thing on our agenda is announcements. Do we? Does anyone have any announcements? No. No. Okay. Um, okay. So the next thing has to do with becoming a commission. I think. Correct. So there were two yeah. items for new business, um, but oh, uh, gonna... but we can skip them because neither of the people who brought them to the attention are are here and go on to becoming a commission. Okay, and maybe they'll come in later. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, Athena, can you tell us exactly where we are in this process of becoming a commission? Sure. So the council has um, adopted the Massachusetts general laws that allow the town to establish a commission and then allow the commission to uh, use the funds that we collect for violations of uh, the handicap parking uh, laws. And they've also um, designated the commission members as special municipal uh, employees, which you are now. So. Um, the next steps are we would like to get some feedback from the Disability Access Advisory Committee on the draft charge that the town manager will eventually approve. And then the town manager will make appointments to the new commission and the council will um, approve those appointments. Okay. Now I have to ask, do we have the draft charge? Yes, I can share it. Oh. Yeah, I have not seen it. Me neither. I went it to that meeting and we didn't have it yet. I mean, you had it, I guess. We didn't have it. Right. So um, I'm going to interrupt for a second just to remind Athena that uh, that she'll have to read the the draft can, charge. Yep, I can go through it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Can I can I just say that what I recall is that Paul had rewritten the charge that the three of us put together and he took out some things that had to, that were in the, uh, in the legislation, mm -hmm. like right in the law. And so have you gotten any more information about how Paul or anybody else stands on the fact that this does not conform with the actual legislation anymore. I don't know what it says, but I know that he took things out that are in the actual law. Right, so um, typically what we do in in committee charges is we don't, and in bylaws and, and uh, policies and so on, is we don't put all of the text from the Massachusetts general laws in because then if the general laws change, we have to go and make amendments. So typically we just make reference to the general laws and that way if the general laws change, we don't need to update our charges. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then there were there was some feedback that you wanted the language in the general laws in the charge, which I think will be fine as long as we um, add some language that says that, you know, in accordance with the general laws and any amendments thereto, or something to that effect, so that if there are any changes to the general laws, they'll we won't need to go back and update the charge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, that sounds good to me because I yeah. think if anyone wants to look, oh, who came in? Jim. Okay. Yay. Hi, Jim. Um, it seems to me that if anyone's going to look at this charge. I guess we're going to post it right on the website. Um, I think it should be pretty descriptive of what we intend to do and what the law says we should do, rather than having anyone look back at the law if they want to know something. It sounds good to me for you to for you to put that little caveat in and put the law back. 
Sure. That's fine. I mean, I don't know how anyone else feels about it. And Pamela, you're going to be a member of this committee, so you're allowed to have a vote and an opinion. <laughs> what do you think? Am I wrong? I mean, I don't know. No, I so am. Oh, so you're the seventh member? No. So the, the, uh, the way in which the statute is written, uh, the town manager can uh, appoint a town employee or staff member to serve as a voting member. The town um, manager has to. Right. It's actually right. in the law that it's required that one of the members be a town a staff member or a town employee or a you know an elected official. It's actually in the law. Right. So would you like me to go through and just read through sure. the charge for okay. you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Please. Uh, so the name is the Commission on Disability. We're calling it COD for short. So you can have a lot of fun calling yourselves the COD. <laughs> um, it's a town committee. We have the legal reference MGL chapter 40 with the sections. Um, the appointing authority is the town manager in accordance with our charter. The number of voting members are seven. Non-voting members, members, we have none. Number of liaisons, we have uh none. That's not right. Is that what you ended up with? The seven? That's what was proposed. Um, no. But we can make changes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put on um track changes here so that I can capture any edits that okay. I has and think we can share them with the town. <laughs> because we had to include a municipal employee or elected official, <clears throat> we we would actually be losing a member from the community if we stayed at seven. So I think yeah. Pamela and I thought we should have nine. I don't. I never wrote anything that had seven. I don't know, do you remember it that way, Pamela? No, so I, I yeah, I agree with you that we had suggested nine so that you would retain um, the spot for the community member. Um, I'm just I don't know how the rest of the group feels about that, but Seven means a reduction in the community membership of the community of the committee of the commission. Elise has her hand up. Okay, Elise, go for it. I have one. Am I unmuted here? Um, yes. yes. Okay, I have one question I'm reading here. It says term three years. Does that mean once we become a, a commission, we all get three more years of the, we all are on here for three more years? I just want to know what I'm getting into. Um, so to to finish the conversation on the number of voting members, the seven for the change from nine to seven may have come from the town manager. I sorry. Um, I don't remember if who made that change before this draft came to the council. Ultimately it will be the town manager's decision um, how many members are on the commission. Um, so just to let you know that we're not making decisions that'll be up to the town manager how many members. Yep. Um, but I'm leaving notes in here that the committee would like to retain a spot for the community member with one of the spots taken by a staff member. And then um, in terms of the term of appointment, three years. So once this commission is established, the town manager will make appointments and the appointments are staggered three-year terms. So I believe the first term, and this is from the general laws, the first term, um, there are staggered terms. So one member might be one year or some members might be one year and then two years and three years. And as those terms expired, they'll be set for three years for the following terms. So we'll have um, initially members with various term lengths. And then as they're renewed or new members are appointed, they'll be for three-year terms. So hmm, I'm still a little confused, but okay. I don't want to take up extra precious time. So Elise, I think if you have um if you would if you have a preference for whether you would be a one, two, or three year appointee to the commission, you can let that be known. Okay. All right. I, I think I that's wanted, what you're trying to get at, right? Yeah, I just wanted some clarity on that. Thank you. Okay. Um yeah. Great. Okay, go on, Athena, please. Um, terms, I'm just making a note. Um, 
So next you are, they will, the members will be special municipal employees. And then the staff support is the town manager or designee. Um, so even though there's a member who's a staff member, there's, we still list a staff support member, staff support person. Hmm. Okay. Um, for composition, it says the commission on disability shall be comprised of seven members. So I'm going to change that to nine appointed by the town manager. A majority of the members shall be people with disabilities. One member shall be a member of the immediate family of a person with a disability. One member shall be either an elected or appointed official of the town. Members serve three-year terms. So we I don't know if we have anyone on the committee uh, currently who is a family member, but not a person with a disability. Uh, their selves, their self. So um, that we have to find out. So that's why I thought we needed nine because I don't, I don't know um, if you're having seven members and one has to be a town official and one has to be a family member. Um, it's true that you can have five people with disabilities, but um, I mean, not everybody has had a disability for sure. But for example. Marty, I don't believe, has a disability. She had an interest. So she doesn't fit into any either of these categories. So it really cuts down on the number of people with disabilities that we can appoint. And that's why I that's why we wanted nine. Just because the law does stipulate who some of the people need to be. Right. So it just says the majority of the members shall be people with disabilities. So there's still space for people without disabilities, but just an interest to be on the commission. Right. But then okay. you only have for people with disabilities. Um, and if you're looking for representation from people from various disability groups so that you can actually have some informed decision making, that's really not a lot of people. Okay. What is the quorum on this group will Four. be with nine people? Four? Oh, five. Five? Yeah. Would that be a challenge for us to get five people to start any meeting? No, we have five right now. We even have six because Pamela would count. I see. Yeah, I don't think we have trouble getting five. Okay. I I just thought we should have a broader representation, an opportunity for broader representation from the disability community, and four people doesn't give you that much. Okay. So I've just right. so okay. I'll, I will make sure to pass that comment on to the town manager. Okay. The next section is purpose. This says the mission of the COD is to foster equal access to a life and activities for people with disabilities. Through education and advocacy, the Commission on Disabilities shall work to raise awareness about the needs of people with disabilities and the importance of increased accessibility to programs housing and facilities in municipal municipal and commercial buildings and other public spaces. The COD promotes adherence to section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA titles 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the US Fair Housing Act, the regulations of the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board and all other related federal, state and town laws and regulations that require access and prohibit discrimination against people with disabilities. The COD may provide advice on access issues to those requesting it. Anybody have any comments on that? Ooh, thunderstorm. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Just, well, I hear thunder. Oh, I'm gonna unplug my computer. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, Okay, so does anyone have any comments on that section? No. No? I like it. Okay, uh, next section, please. The next section is the charge. It states the COD shall provide timely review and response to all MAAB variance applications under the authority of the COD in accordance with Chapter 256 of the Massachusetts General Laws. 
I just made a note to spell out what MAAB means. Massachusetts Architectural Access Board. Oh, I Oops. think that. Whoa, it keeps jumping. Okay, that's up above. Um, the next is advise and assist municipal officials and employees in insurance compliance with state and federal laws and regulations that affect people with disabilities. Next is work in cooperation with the departments and agencies of the town to bring about maximum participation of people with disabilities. Provide information and advice to individuals, businesses, organizations, and public agencies in all matters pertaining to access to people with disabilities. Research, understand, evaluate, and advocate local issues, challenges, and opportunities encountered by people with disabilities. Encourage public awareness of disability issues. Upon town council approval of chapter 40, section 22G of the Massachusetts General Laws, recommend the allocation of funds received from fines assessed for violations of handicap parking in the town to be used solely for the benefit of persons with disabilities. Does that need to be in the charge since that's already been done? Uh, no. Okay. So I'm so you can that just to take out, yeah. To recommend the allocation of funds received from fines assessed for violations of handicap parking in the town to be used solely for the benefit of persons with disabilities. Okay. Um, and so I think some of the some of the changes that were made here were language changes that don't align with the Massachusetts general law. So I'm just going to put in a note to just copy what is in the general law and add, okay. and add a note that stipulates that any changes to so the general law. What are you going to encourage him to change? Because, for example, the one about the ADA, the Fair Housing Act, that is not all in the law. Just looking so, for the um, So I wonder what, what are you going to recommend that changes? Most of it was taken from the law. Right, but that part we expanded. So, Myra, can I? Uh, I'm going to interrupt for a second. I yeah. think the intent is to um, to copy the exact language from this from the statute in the charge section. That's where some of the um, language had been omitted, and I think actually, a uh, counselor, um, Mandy Jo Haneke, um, noted that the that the language in that charge section was different from the statute. So the the goal yeah. would be to mirror the statute exactly. Okay. I I have a one question. Somehow I remember that this the commission could also accept private donations. Mm -hmm. That should be coming up. Did he oh, did Paul take that out? Because we put that in. Yeah. Okay. It, I don't. A, I thought we were. Uh, this page was the end of the charges, so right. it, I didn't so, realize. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, the, the statute, um, which gives you the authority to accept um, uh, parking fines money, also gives you the authority right. to accept right. private foundation uh, money right. from private donations, but you, you, that section probably doesn't necessarily need to be in the charge. If you think about the charge as the actions that you're going to take and that statutory authority um, simply grants you permission or allowance to accept money. I see. Yeah. Um, but since it is actually in the legislation, in the statute, it's not legislation. It's actually in the statute. Can it go in here? 
So in the statute, it says said commission may receive gifts of property, both real and personal in the name of the city or town subject to the approval of the city council in a city um, or the board of selectmen in a town, such gifts to be managed and controlled by said commission for the purposes of this section. So most of this um, I will recommend be included in the charge. Okay. Um, cool. There are parts that I don't think make sense to include in the charge here. You know what I can share the actual law here. Um, so now we're looking at section 8J of chapter 40 commission, um, disability commission powers and duties, members and terms. So, it, the, you know, there's some things, a city which accepts the provision of this section by vote of its city council. There's just some language that we don't necessarily need to include because it's it's already been done. Um, but, right. but the section that says such commission shall, uh, one, research local problems of people with disabilities, two, advise and assist municipal officials, and so on. We, we can, I'll propose that we include that part. Yeah. So, Athena, I'm just going to point out again that both Elise and Myra will, won't be able to read the statute that's um, that in the screen share. And sure. so if you're going over those, those sections, you just need to um, to really talk about them and do it a little bit slower. But oh, okay. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Would you would you like me to read through the section? So we can talk about what's in the section that you would like or not like to be included. Uh, yeah, maybe that would be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I can't, it, it's jumping around too much. I'm gonna just have to listen. Okay, so I'm happy to read through it for you. Um, a city which accepts the provisions of this section by vote of its city council, subject to the provisions of its charter, or a town which accepts the provisions of this section at an annual or special town meeting may establish a commission on disability here and after called the commission to cause the full integration and participation of people with disabilities in such city or town. Such we don't need any of that, uh, right? Okay. I don't think we need any of that. No. It's I don't think so lot. either. No, I think that's just a lot. How, yeah. I think it's just yeah. how how it's established. I don't think it's right, necessary. right, right. Um, such commission shall one research local problems of people with disabilities, two advise and assist municipal officials and employees in ensuring compliance with state and federal laws and regulations that affect people with disabilities, three coordinate or carry out programs to designed to meet the problems of people with disabilities in coordination with programs of the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Four, review and make recommendations about policies, procedures, services, activities, and facilities of departments, boards, and agencies of said city or town as they affect people with disabilities. Five, provide information, referrals, guidance, and technical assistance to individuals, public agencies, businesses, and organizations in all matters pertaining to disability. And six, coordinate activities of other local groups organized for similar purposes. What do people think? Mm. We do most of that anyway. <laughs> right. Well, I, I think, think that's, I think you've just talked exactly about, at least what you just said is why we need to be a commission and not a committee. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, right. I mean, that's exactly what you said. Okay. Um, so yeah. the other part that has to do with the uh, ADA comply, I mean, the um, applications is not in that part. It's in another part. Okay, so I haven't gone. I haven't gone through the. I haven't gone through the whole statute yet. So, um, okay. Would you like me? I to don't think continue? the rest of it is in the statute. That's the weird thing. Keep going. Said commission shall keep records of its meetings and actions and file an annual report, which shall be printed in the city or town annual report, and shall have at least ten meetings annually. Which we do anyway. Yeah, we do all that. 
Do you think that ought to be included in the charge? Um, no. Nah. What do you think? What do you think, Jim, Saren, Cody? Well, I mean, uh, I think, Athena, you said that uh, there'll be a link that uh, it does all the um, th this a uh, the state part this the state report it will link to that and any amendments made on it automatically right correct so if that is the case why do we have to repeat it again in such big language you know because yeah. this is really complicated so I think that really won't be necessary in my opinion I think this part isn't necessary I agree with you because it just talks about, you know, sort of how many meetings we have to have and stuff like that. I mean, we're not saying how people are going to be appointed and that the year, the terms are going to be staggered. And we're not right. We're not putting any of that in. Or are we? I don't. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Maybe we did. Did you read that already? I'm not even sure. Okay. But I don't know that that needs to be there, but it's just really one sentence. So would, I mean, it's in the statute. It wouldn't kill anybody if it's there and if it's not. I just thought that the reason we should have a clear charge is so that people can look at it and see what we do and see what we're responsible for. Um, and if they want more information, they can look at the statute. And that's why I'm not sure we need the 10 meetings in the annual report, but maybe we do. What do you think, Pamela? So I think that... Um... The first paragraph is the most important paragraph, and that really outlines what the activities and duties and responsibilities would um, include. And this small paragraph about the annual meetings and the one that follows it, which talks about the composition and the membership, um, are probably not needed. I, I think, you know, obviously I can't speak for Councillor um, Henneke, but I think what was noted was that some of the things that were outlined in the first paragraph were not included in the charge. And if we went back and included those sections with in the draft charge, then it would be um, complete. So I, I don't know if you need to continue reading through the other parts of the statute or that they would need to be included in the charge. Um, the, the next section after the one I just read, that speaks to the membership, and I think we okay. have captured exactly what it says here in the membership section. Okay. And the only thing that it didn't say had to do with receiving donations. Um, and I'm not sure that that would be a bad thing to put in to our charge, because if people see that we can receive donations, maybe they would be interested in making one. Not yeah. every town board can receive a donation. Okay. Yeah. Right? So I, I mean, it, the likelihood is not great, but then again, um, I don't know what do people think about that part. It is also in the statute and, you know, we could pick and choose what's in the statute or we could put the whole statute in. And I think Mandy Jo uh, Haneke, um, you know, could, I guess, she's probably going to be the person who on the council is the most um, wordsmithy about it. Wouldn't you agree? Um, but I think I think the fact that we can receive donations should be taken into the part after the money yeah. where we can get the pine. You know where it is in the statute right after the twenty two G fine uh, parking fine funds. Right. So we can just and put it there. Yeah, it was there to start yeah. with. That's how it stayed in my right. memory. That's and correct. I was looking for it and it disappeared. So that's, that's correct. why I thought, good idea when I saw that. So that's why I yep. raised it up. Yeah. So we should take that part from the statute and put it in the paragraph with the parking uh, funds because that's actually where it is in the statute. Right. Okay. Um, so I've added that the commission may receive gifts. Yeah. Um, and I'm, so the, the section regarding handicap parking violations is from section 22 G. So I'll include that. 
Is that what you're asking me to do? Um, no, in the paragraph where, remember you took out the, you can approve 22G because we already, they the council already did. Mm -hmm. um, you took out the, the sentence about that, but you left the substance there about parking violations, right? Um, there is a bullet that says to recommend the allocation of funds received from fines assessed for violations. You want to keep this, right? Yes. yes. Okay. But we, an you could get an additional bullet, or you could just put an additional sentence in that bullet and take it out of the statute, the part that refers to receiving donations of private funds. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we also spoke, Pamela and I also had a meeting. Please forgive me. I don't remember the name. Jen, somebody. The fountain. Yeah. Fountain. Her, her fountain. Fountain. Okay. Okay. Um, and she described to us what kind of an account would be established. I'm not sure that needs to be in the charge. That's just administrative for the town. It's, what do you think, Pamela or right. Athena? I don't think that that needs to be in the charge. She just reviewed the process right. and okay, uh, okay, so, yeah, okay, all right. But I do, um, uh, yeah. As long as you add the additional sentence that Saren recommended, I think I think that it's good. I um, yeah, Jim, do you yeah. have any Jim? Do you have any um, comments? Do you see anything that's there that shouldn't be or that isn't there that should be? I. I find some ambiguity in I'm sorry? the- you, wait, I'm sorry. You, you, it didn't come out, the beginning of what you said. I find so, some yeah. ambiguity in the sentence about um, the handicapped parking fees. Um, what is the status of the money collected now yeah. from those fees? Fines. What do you mean? What What do you mean by what is the status like the, the, right now? Well, they go into where the, do they go now, and how are they used? Yeah. So, so the, I think. Oh, go ahead, Ethie. <laughs> currently, they go into the general fund, just like our the other parking fees, mm -hmm. um, and there's a the transportation fund. So they're used like every other parking fee. Now that the council has adopted these general laws that allow the commission on disability to be established and for the commission to use the handicap parking violation fees for those specific purposes, we will begin to account for those fees. Um, as Myra mentioned in a separate account, um, the treasurer would give updates on the, the funds that are in the account. I think what Jen had said was that there is maybe a couple thousand dollars per year that are collected for, and, and that varies year to year, depending on, of course, how many violations there are. Um, but those would be put into a separate account along with any gifts. Um, and that could be part of your annual report, the status of the funds and any recommendations you have for expending the funds. So, okay, because as, as the sentence is written now, and it's okay, but as the sentence is written now, it could be construed as the committee has the responsibility to allocate these funds up to the point where somebody else doesn't want them. Uh, now, and that's how it could be read. So, but as long as all these funds are automatically going into that separate account with no skimming, uh, that's fine. That's my concern. Okay, so right now the the bullet point reads to recommend the allocation of funds received from fines assessed for violations of handicap parking in the town to be used solely for the benefit of persons with disabilities. So, um, so the funds would be put into an account. Um, I I believe um, that this is one of the only accounts that would just carry over and unused funds wouldn't go back to free cash at the end of the year. So the funds in that account would accumulate and they wouldn't be accessible for other purposes. So some restricted fund created for that. It's restricted for this specific use. This was, and right. who will have the, uh, the final say and how those funds could be used? That's like for question. example, in, in the picture that just Jim said, 
could we say, okay, so we want the funds to be applied to uh, fix that spot. Could we have the authority to say that? That that's should a, be clarified in my opinion. That's a great question. So what the commission would do is keep track of the amount of funds there, and then you could research ways that you can use the funds depending on how much is there. So you might make a recommendation that the funds be used to, like you said, repair uh, or install a ramp or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. The recommendation would go to the council because the council has to approve appropriations of any funds for the town. Um, so that recommendation would come to the council. The council has to hold a public forum on any spending of money outside the annual budget. And then ultimately they would make the approval of the allocation of those funds. I see. So, so those funds have any role in that process? Oops, sorry. It, it's hard for me to hear when two people are talking at once. Does the town manager have any role in that process that you just described? So typically, so this is very similar to the process that we use for Community Preservation Act funds. And in that situation, the Community Preservation Act committee makes recommendations to the council for appropriation of funds. Um, the town manager usually helps coordinate the presentation of the recommendations to the council and then make sure that all the things get done that need to be done in order to finalize that. Um, my new role in the town is legislative affairs. So I'll be helping to kind of bridge the gap between the Commission on Disability and the council and make sure that your recommendations come to the council, you know when they'll be presented and and um, can follow the process for approval through the council. Does that answer your question, Jim? Um, I think so. I'm just trying to game out a scenario where we recommend something and then the council says no. Uh, we don't think that's a very good <laughs> idea. Uh, does that then go back to us to uh, say, okay, well, here's plan B. Yes. So the council might say no. It's what you would do is recommend the allocation of funds. You don't have the authority to spend them on your own. Um, so the council might say no. They might say, you know, we really like this idea, but we want you to change something about your recommendation or we want you to consider something before you and maybe bring a, an amended recommendation back. I will say that I, I don't recall a time that the Community Preservation Act Committee has made a recommendation to council that they didn't approve or didn't approve with a minor change. So I think it's you know fairly unlikely that they won't take your advice. Um, typically our process and what the charter requires is that any uh, requests for these type of appropriations from the council have to go through their finance committee. And that is usually the place where um, the recommending committee, the Commission on Disability would explain your recommendation and kind of give more context and answer questions about your recommendation. And then finance committee um, reports back to the council with more information if, if there are questions from counselors about the use of those funds. Okay. All right, yeah. that that that's pretty clear. Um, yeah. Are there any other things that people think are there that shouldn't be, not there that should be? Hey, I have a question about special um, that uh, this committee members were municipal special municipal whatever something like that there was yeah what is that could you define that, what that means for us yeah this is one that i have to let me see if i can it was at the top special, of special special municipal employee right yeah, so this is a it, yeah it's a it has to do with the conflict of interest law, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not as sharp on this as some others are. The, the town clerk is much more knowledgeable about how the conflict of interest law applies to special municipal employees. I, we've always yeah. been considered to be. We've always had to do that questionnaire every two years. We always 
we we always hear from the clerk. We we've always had to do that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure that's different than the way we've been perceived to be all along. But oh, now good. it's just in writing. So okay. so the difference between between um, regular municipal employees and special municipal employees is that the conflict of interest law is less strict for special municipal employees. Mm. And I can send you I can send you information about how special municipal employees are different than mm. regular municipal employees. Interesting. If you're interested, but it's it has to do with the conflict of interest. So it allows you to do more as a special municipal employee that would ordinarily be a conflict of interest for town employees. Mm-hmm. I, so okay. can I have questionnaire, to that questionnaire we've always gotten is for special municipal employees. You know that thing we have to do every two years, right? God, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a pain in the neck to log in. Yeah, that one. Right. Um, I, mean, I don't want to do it again. Would be, yeah. More <laughs> suitable would be uh, advisor sort of a thing rather than an employee, but. You know, the so way the I, conflict of interest law is written is that you're you're acting on behalf of the town in this way, and so uh, board and committee me- members are in, considered municipal employees just for the purposes of the conflict of interest law, not in a literal "you are paid for your position" type of way. Okay, so it's just a definition in that but, particular but law. In a that way, makes- but in a way, are we going to represent the people? with disabilities of the town or are we represent are we serving in this commission as town employees that's my distinction because i don't want to be limited with our advocacy role so can i weigh in for a a second yes Yes, please good question all right so you're you are not limited in your advocacy you are able to advocate for anyone with a with a disability um, that or anyone um, who has a, a concern about access or uh, accommodations within town. That would all be within the role. As um, Athena was saying, the title special municipal employees um, really uh, refers to the fact that you have to. Uh, undergo training through the conflict of interest law, which you have done in the past. That's true mm-hmm. of every person who serves on an appointed board for the town. But um, it does not limit your function as far as whether you're able to advocate only for town employees. That's not the purpose. The purpose is is simply to, to state that um, or to acknowledge that um, in your role as a commissioner on the Commission for Disabilities, you have to be aware of and adhere to the state conflicts of interest law. I don't think it's any different than it's ever been. Right, exactly. It's not. It's exactly the same. Okay. Does that help? So, yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're asking. About mind. The, yeah. Yeah. So we if we have concerns, say that again, Jim, please. Uh, we don't get any retirement benefits. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do based on the salary you receive. <laughs> That's true. It's a percentage. That's right. <laughs> okay. I thank you, Athena, for all of the work that you have done with us on this, um, you know, I mean, we sort of started out, um, you know, we wrote something, We sh- I just want to tell the people what happened. Um, uh, Marty and Pamela and I met, there were a couple of iterations of things that we wrote. Uh, we sort of agreed on them. We sent them over to Athena. Athena went through it all and we had a meeting with Athena. Um, after that, um, and then we met with Jen LaFountain, and then we went to the town council. Did I miss anything? Anyway, it's been a process. Um, and thank you so much for helping us develop this to the point that it that it is. Um, and I think, um, you know, the town council, I think, will fix it because I think Mandy Joe will make them fix it. 
um, <laughs> go along with the statute. I don't. She can't make them, but um, you know, I think she's usually pretty persuasive when it has to do with the law, with the legal part. Um, and I think that um, I'm I'm pretty excited about this because it actually puts into some context of makes official what this committee has done for 30 years. Um, and I think it's really important that it be acknowledged that way. And I appreciate the way that it's been put together. And I appreciate the way that the council has approved of it. Um, I don't know, it, um, to me, it feels good. Um, and we can't always say that, right? But to me, it feels good. Um, so I thank you for the work that you've done. The next step is it goes back to the council with these changes or it goes to Paul or how does it work from here? Or do we have to go to GOL or what, what happens here? Myra, it's been such a pleasure working with you and thank you for including me in this conversation. I really appreciate this. This has been a, a learning experience for me too. So I appreciate the opportunity to do this with you. The next steps for the charge, uh, would be for the town manager to approve the charge. This one is um, approved simply by the town manager. It doesn't have to go back to the council or through another council committee. And then the town manager will um, make appointments, officially make appointments to the commission on disability. And then those appointments come to the council for approval. And that process okay. is in our charter. So it's the town manager that makes the appointments and then uh, those get referred to a council committee. So it's not the charge, but the appointments that will come through. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the charge is not, was not what Councillor Haneke had in mind as far as the statute, that doesn't go back to them at all. That just goes to Paul. That's right. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you can be persuasive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll do my best for you. <laughs> All right. We'll pay you, you know, we'll pay you our, based on our salary, we'll pay you. <laughs> All right. Thank That's you good. so much for giving this much time. Um, It's been a lot of time and I know you have other things that you have to do. So I, I really appreciate it. And I think this is a good thing. And I just want to remind the committee that when I wrote to Paul and to Lynn Griesemer, uh, Councillor Griesemer, uh, suggesting this months ago, I did say that we should establish this commission uh, in in memory of Joe Tringali, who had been trying to get it done for many years. Um, yes. And his name was presented to Paul and to Lynn Griesmer. And um, I am thinking about Joe at this time because he would be, I think, happy although frustrated that it took so long so uh yes. anyway i just want people to know that his name was used um and i used it when i spoke to the council as well great thank you so much myra okay all right, all right. um I'm, thank you i'm gonna leave you if you don't need me anymore no. and and thank you and all right thank you so much for all you've done for thank us thank you okay thank you thanks thank Fantastic. you Bye -bye. okay bye thank you Really well, that good. is very cool. It's going to happen, folks. I think it actually has happened. We just have to yes. make sure that the language is, but the language isn't that different from what we want. It's the nine members that I really think we need to uh, talk about with Paul, because I think the seven, given what's in the statute, is sort of restrictive about the number of people with disabilities from the community. And I I, I would like it not to be restrictive like that. That's okay. Right. All right, so um, Jim, these other two items come from you, I think. One about the stamping. No, that's not from Jim. Um, the stamping of, could you tell us more about the stamping of the sidewalk? Okay, so before um, I uh, go into the stamping of the sidewalks, the first new business was around Amherst Restaurant um, Accessibility. Oh, yeah. okay. And that's the one that comes from Jim. Right. Okay. Wait, there's too many people. What? So they're under new business. The first item was Amherst Restaurant Accessibility. And you do have a member of the audience who wanted to um, perhaps have that discussion. Ah, okay. So. Perfect. So do we want, Jim, you sent it to us. Do you want to lay this out before we hear the person from the community? 
Okay. Um, so Myra, it wasn't Jim who sent that item. Oh. It was me. Oh. <laughs> All right. The other item. Um, so let me just ask, uh, uh, does our member of the audience want to be made a panelist to discuss this? Yes. So I'm going to bring you in and, um, and promote you to a panelist so that you can have the discussion. All right. Okay. All right. So All Maura, right. you're, you're, you're here and um, able to speak and address the, the panel. All right. This is Maura Keen, and I live in South Amherst. And I have hi, a hi. I have a <laughs> close friend who is totally paralyzed on one side of his body, so he can't transfer from one, like from a wheelchair to a chair or anything. So we were going to meet in Amherst the other day for lunch, and my husband and I were scouting out restaurants to see which could accommodate his wheelchair which is he needs a 30 inch high table and unfortunately we went to i think four different restaurants all south of amity street we didn't try north of amity street and none of them could had tables that were either high enough or had four legs that you could put lifts underneath to raise it to the proper height so unfortunately we couldn't eat in downtown amherst but it would seem like a simple thing to correct to make sure that a restaurant had at least one table that you could put risers underneath to make it accommodate a higher wheelchair. If he ever gets an electric wheelchair, then that's lower and he'll be able to sit at a normal size table, but he doesn't have that yet. So that was um, our simple request or something to look into. We had never thought of it before. And 30 Boltwood is great for, for people in wheelchairs. It's got a lot of space between the tables, but all the tables are on pedestals. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, um, does anyone on the committee, I mean, I actually don't know anything about this, but I think there are two people who probably do um, so could you enlighten us as to what you know about this, um, uh, about tables and extent, extensions of height and uh, accessibility and what people should do in this case and whether you think that this committee has any role here? Well, um, I'm a wheelchair user and I have faced this problem uh, all the time, but a, my solution is I have footrest and my, uh, when I release the footrest to the side of my wheelchair and I can lower the height that I require. So I adjust that way. And, but as far as I know in the ADA regulations, it does not touch any furniture. They look at this as furniture height. The same problem is true with beds in hotels. You know, now the mattresses are very high and they're very plush. And uh, so they're so high for me to transfer from, from a wheelchair. But there's really, as far as I know, no regulations set for the height of furniture in restaurants and hotels and in public places as far I, as I, I agree with Seren. I, I don't know of any such you know statutory regulations or anything like that and most people just sort of wing it and so yeah. you know and and different people come in with different chairs or or different issues and you don't quite get it but you bring a lap something to put a board to put on your lap or something like that um so uh i yeah. know it can be frustrating and maybe there's some opportunity to educate uh restaurants uh or you know public facilities uh and i'm, I'm using public in the sense of you know yeah. such as restaurants and motels whatever um that would it be nice to have such accommodations but yeah. I'm not sure there's any legal 
leverage. I don't believe there's any legal leverage that could be applied in this case. We could make a, a maybe reach out to restaurants and uh, do presentation and the challenges it creates for people with wheelchairs. And we recommend uh, them to maybe yeah. use some uh, some things that will slightly increase the height. We don't know, but it should be just like a reaching out and asking them voluntarily. Maybe we could use um, some of the money we get from the traffic violations. <laughs> uh, can but I ask a really stupid question? Is is are these tables that are typically in restaurants too low or too high? Too low, They're usually too low. Yeah. Okay, but the all the tables are different. Some of them are metal pedestals, which will be very difficult to increase the height. And some of them would be just like regular four legs. And I think that should be easier to handle. But some restaurants are very accommodating. So maybe we, what I try to do, I try to do my business with those that are sensitive to our needs. But that's my personal choice. I mean, one thing I could think like we could, 30 Boltwood, is uh, Amherst College property, actually, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if that puts them in a different category, but 30 Boltwood has the money to buy a table. Um, you know, I don't know that, you know, little tiny restaurants do. Yeah. But uh, 30 Boltwood has the money to buy a table. Um, and so maybe we could start with them um, you know, most, most restaurants are not rolling in dough. Um, so yeah. I, I, you know, I, I just think we could start with 30 Boltwood, um, and maybe offline you could tell Morakeen where you tend to find success. Maybe there are some places that, you know, there are a number of restaurants north of Amity Street. Um, and I don't know if any of them work for you. I don't know where you go out to eat. And I don't know if you want to mention them here at the meeting, but um, I, I, Jim and Saren would know if there were any regulations about this. Um, so I think maybe you could, um, Saren or Jim, are, is your contact information on our website? I don't even know. So, so I would, um, I'm going to um, interrupt to make a couple of su suggestions. Please do. Yeah. So I'm this, I received your uh, email more and this has been an incredibly busy like week for me with events on last Sunday and then one last night and then another event um, tomorrow. One suggestion that I have is that I'm happy to reach out to uh, one of our contacts at the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Um, uh, Jeff Dugan has been very helpful in providing information. And so he might know specifically what um, is required under the state and federal regulations. So I'm happy to follow up and do that next week. And then if you wanted to contact um, Saren or, or Jim directly to ask them about locations and town that they've used. I would not suggest that we do that during the public meeting, but you no. could you could just email me that you're interested in that um, information and I can um, obtain it from them and share and share it with you. Sure. Yep, yep score ahead more. Um, I don't think there's going to be any statute, but it seems like a small thing that a restaurant they probably don't even think of it because I don't think of it that they should have one table that can be raised if necessary to accommodate someone. And so it's not a big expense. I don't think it might, they might say it's not, um, it doesn't fit with their decor or something to have one table that's different. But um, yeah, I don't think there's going to be anything legal 
Right. Now the hotel yeah. also gotten all these platform beds that go all the way to the floor. So my friend's lift that he needs to get into bed doesn't fit underneath it. And yeah. they're all listed as accessible, but you have to call and say is um, precisely what you mean by accessible, accessible to who. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> um, I'll keep investigating restaurants in Amherst to see if any of them do have that kind of table. But um, well, yeah. Jim and Saren would be good sources of information for you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And maybe just a letter to restaurants saying maybe you can think about this and some of them will. I I think we could do that. Or when when they uh try to renovate their furniture and everything, maybe they can ask us to assist them, show them at least the dilemma. I'm sure they know, they're aware. Yeah. Okay. If we can get Thank into you. the restaurant, of course to start with. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we should write a letter that we can send to all the restaurants just to let them know that there are people in the community that have difficulty eating uh, in their establishments because they don't have any tables that are high enough to accommodate the needs of people who use wheelchairs. So we could do that and we could yeah. try to, I mean, we don't even have a budget. So sending it <laughs> to... Um, <laughs> Sending it right now. We don't have a budget, um, but somehow we can how about perhaps post chamber, it on the website anyway. How about uh, what does Chamber of Commerce do? Can't they bring it up to oh, Chamber? Oh, good question. They have a newsletter. Fabulous idea. Okay, so we have to write something. Um, anybody want to volunteer to write it? I can work with somebody. Okay. I can work with you. And then we can send it over to the Chamber of Commerce. They have a newsletter. I used to put stuff in there when I was in the high school. So, yeah. We can do that. That would be okay. a good way to reach them, and it wouldn't cost us anything. It's an email newsletter. Yeah. And I'm sure they would do it. Good idea. That's why we need a lot of people on the committee. See, we need a lot of <laughs> Okay. All right. So... Laura, we're going to put something in Chamber of Commerce newsletter, and you can speak with Jim and Sarah to find out how they have handled this as well as they've had to handle it in their lives. Does that work? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Excellent. All right. So, Sarah, when you get it written, send it to me, and okay. um, and we can work on it together. Let, let All right. me try to find a place with good tables first and I'll take a picture and that might be something this fits perfectly that kind of a thing oh, I, wow. think, okay. I, I think I know a restaurant where it is really nice it's Amherst Public House mm -hmm. restaurant I don't even know where that is you it's, a new one, right? it's, it's on University Drive it used okay. to be Savannah's and oh, it yeah, could yeah. And I think their tables, at least okay. at the okay. place where we sit, is pretty good. Okay, I'll check on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now yeah. we get to stamped sidewalks. Is that the next one? So, yeah. So stamped okay. sidewalks is the next one. And I'm also just going to um, share that Alicia shared earlier that she has to leave promptly at 1 p.m. Okay. Yeah. All right. But so, we'll still have a quorum. So, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So I received um, an email from Jeff Dugan, who had received an, um, an email from a non-Amherst restaurant, uh, non-Amherst resident who had read that the town is going to be installing stamped concrete sidewalks in certain sections. And so he... Um, it's basically the poured concrete is stamped like with a form. So it looks like brick, even though it's not brick. So it creates sort of a pattern on top of the, of the concrete. Is it mm. textured? Yeah. Oy. Okay. Not, yeah. So it I don't know can if... be a problem. Right. There yep. is a driveway in my neighborhood that is like that. And it is mm. stamped mm -hmm. and it is beautiful. And it is on the north side of their garage, and it is icy. 
because so, there are little cracky things. No, not a good what idea. Do you, what do you know, Pamela, about this? I know very little, but when the email came in from Jeff Dugan, I did share it with um, uh, our planning department and with DPW. And uh, Guilford has uh, told me it, it is a DPW project. They have had similar projects in the past. Um, and he has stated that he would invite Jeff Dugan out to take a look at the project if need be. Oh boy. And okay. I'm just, so I'm just so bringing, many other things. Right. So I'm just bringing that to your attention. It was not an issue or concern that anyone in Amherst raised. It came from um, a non Amherst resident. And I've just shared mm. that information on with, um, Guilford and, um, and others in town hall. And I'm so glad he raised it. Yeah. So separately, but sort of related to the issue of concrete, since I had already published the agenda, you received photographs from Jim about deteriorating sidewalks. And so mm -hmm. um, I will turn it over to him to discuss that, that those. Okay. So um some years ago at the intersection of Southeast Street and College Street, and College Street then becomes Belchertown Road once you get through the intersection. Um, but on the College Street side, the town installed new accessible, I mean, the, the deliberately accessible sidewalks. Uh, I can't remember what was there before that, to be honest with you but um, they're raised on both sides. So there's a curb alongside um, College Street uh, and there's also curbs um, that basically, you know, border the parking lots because uh, there are lots of little mini malls. Um, there's, one, there's one on the south side where Florence Bank is and Amherst Fitness. And then there's a number of them on the other side, uh, on the north side. So what has happened is an extraordinary deterioration of sidewalks on the east end of this whole deal, right? Sort of, there's the intersection, as I said, there's this Fluent Savings Bank on the one side, and then there's the dry cleaning establishment and Liberty tax. And then you go to the next one, which is um, Spirit House. Um, there's a lot of deterioration in the sidewalks there. There's also a slope that looks fishy to me, but I'm not, you know, when I, I'm not sure that it's in violation, but it does look awfully steep. Um, but as you could see in the photographs, um, there's basically no sidewalk or there's chunks of concrete remaining, anybody with a mobility impairment or somebody with a stroller, anybody who, uh, well, th they need to get down into the parking lot uh, and walk there because it's simply impassable uh, or not yeah. safe. And I asked Guilford about this uh, a couple of meetings ago when we were talking, generally talking about the crosswalk uh, from Colonial Village across Belchertown Road. And because this was close to that, I asked whether there were any plans to assess those sidewalks and to fix them. And he said at that point, no. So a couple of, Correct. A couple you of days did ago, that. I had the opportunity to um, take some photographs of it, which I thought would be useful. You know, we're not yep. talking, you know, it's always a problem if a sidewalk is impassable. We're not talking about, you know, where one slab of concrete is a half inch higher than the other, which is a pain yeah. and should be corrected. Yeah. But we're talking about this is a real problem right yeah. now. It's awful. Yeah. OK, so uh, I talked to Andy Steinberg about this. He is the chair of the TSO, no, uh, what's it called? The, yeah, TSO, whatever that is. It's one of the town council committees, town services, something or other. And he was interested in this. He wanted to know what the problem, you know, like how you navigate that sidewalk. And I said, I think they have to go into the street. Now you're telling me that you go into the parking lot, but that's just as bad, not quite as bad because it's Route 9. Um, but he was interested. 
So I think we need to send those pictures and send a letter to the TSO um, so that uh, they can be aware of the severity of the problem. What do you, what, what do people think? Well, it's a good idea to start with, Myra, but I think this needs to some changes in the way the town look at some immediate problems that we bring up. L like they have a site, you know, like if you see something reported, you take a picture and they report, supposedly you report it and they fix it immediately, supposedly. But <laughs> I'm facing with that Mill River pavilion and this woman fell through the level difference in the pavilion and uh, Paul Buckelman was in that same meeting that I was there when this happened. And I said, Paul, I'm going to raise it to the DAC meeting, which we will feel, uh, which we will meet this week. So, which I did, this was like about two years yep. ago. And they said, oh, there are lots of issues. They did look, look at it. They said, there's lots of issues with Mill Valley. A Mill River Pavil, uh, area, the park. So they all need to be addressed. And I know some of them very uh, closely, but they didn't do anything. So they said, we will not hold public meetings there. Are they uh, doing that? No. I they was, did, uh, no. Not really. Two weeks ago, I was at the Amherst Neighbors Annual yeah. Picnic there. And uh, they still had it there. And it's an elderly crowd. So with uh, vision, visual impairment, we really cannot sometimes see the level difference. So, you know, okay. and nothing is being done. So what I want the town to focus on a different way of approaching, if this is an immediate concern, they shouldn't look at the whole part in this case to see they will apply, they will apply for a couple of hundred thousand dollars to make an architecture firm do evaluations on the property, uh, plan it, a couple of hundred thousand it will cost at least, and then apply for a grant. And will it ever be done? Maybe 10 years, maybe five years, you know? Whereas I think like in the sidewalk, I know the answer they will just say, oh, we are going to have, a, a, we just applied for a grant, which will happen, maybe we will know about it in three years or two years or so. And it will be put on the back burner. Whereas I think little projects like this, they should have like a couple of hundred thousand dollars in each budget year to do immediate fixes, like this pothole uh, that uh, was so, clear in your pictures, Jim, they should yeah. just rush to fix it. Because if somebody like that, uh, somebody in mobility impairment starts on one end of the sidewalk and in the middle of it, oh my God, I can't go any further. Is it wide enough for me to maneuver, go backwards? You know, or I might not visually see it and I will find myself going okay. through a scary situation. So going to Guilford is not the thing to do because you no. already went to Guilford. He yeah. heard about it two months ago directly from Jim. Jim said it's impassable. Jim said it's yeah. dangerous. Guilford said, yeah, whatever. So yeah. That, yeah. That, is, that is not the thing to do. And I think the thing to do is to go to the TSO, which is a, a subcommittee of the town council um, that is supposed to deal with this kind of stuff. And I would send a letter to them, and I would say that this has been presented to Guilford, um, and that Guilford is aware of the situation, and we want them to advocate for immediate resolution of this very dangerous situation. What do you think, Pamela? I think I'm not a voting member yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can give it a try, Myra. Yeah. I mean, so I think it's the only thing we can do. Because it's already been mentioned to the other party, 
and it's still an issue. And it was a couple months ago, at least two or three. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, if it's really dangerous and nothing's been done about it by the person who could do something about it, it seems like the council has to get involved um, and tell the town manager that they need to do something about it. Seems like to me, that would be the protocol. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, so, Jim, are you willing to draft something? You can send it to me. I'll be happy to work with it. Are you willing to draft something and include your pictures? Yes, I, I will do that. Um, okay. and then, but I also think that Seren's point is is a good one. There is a, a larger issue here where um, things don't get addressed very quickly, uh, to that say is. the least. It just goes on yeah. and on and on and on. Yeah. And and that makes it difficult for advocates um, because yeah. <laughs> wasn't there a proposal three years ago that was supposed to address this issue? Uh, it's it's very hard to keep track of. And of course, you know, for the people who have to live with this stuff every day, it's a big deal. Yeah. Well, so anyway, I, mean, I, I do think that Seren's point needs to be considered. And maybe I can add a paragraph or something like that in, in this draft letter so that the committee can also think about this. Coming from you because you have direct experience with the danger. And I think nobody can express it better than somebody who has direct experience. Um yeah. and I I think um I think it's really important for us to, they are the town council. They are a subcommittee of the town council. Um, and we can send, because I already talked to Andy Steinberg about it. And he was interested in knowing more. And uh, that was like in May, I talked to him and I was gone for two and a half weeks. I just came back last night. So, um, but I, he will want to hear this. He He will be interested in knowing what the problem is. And he will, I think they will take it to the council um, to, you know, I mean, I think that's all we can do right now. Uh, as for the bigger issue about whether there ought to be a fund for emergencies mm -hmm. that have to do with uh, the safety of people with disabilities, I think that's another issue. And I think we can get to that. But right now, I think we could start with this. Yeah. So I think, uh, Jim, you're going to write a letter about this one. Saren, you're going to write a letter about the tables. Both of you yes. send it to me. Um, and um, then we'll proceed. I'll send them to Pamela um, after we work on them. And she can present them. Um, I mean, Pamela usually makes the things I write look pretty and puts them on letterhead. Um, and I, I think she needs to be involved in the process of it, of uh looking, you know, at, uh, you know, all all the heads are better than one. So I think that's so, what we need so, to do. So yeah, may I make a suggestion that you um, call for a motion to, for the um, committee to approve the writing of these letters and submitting yes. them? Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. Um, okay, so I need a motion about writing a letter for the Chamber of Commerce newsletter to do with Table Heights and Restaurants um, to inform, we need a motion about informing restaurant owners about uh, table heights in restaurants. And um, yeah, I think I need that. Okay. And I'll decide what to do with it, which send it to the Chamber of Commerce. Do I have a motion? Cody is moving it. Yay. Thank you. Okay, um, we have second. I'll second. Elise. Okay, Elise. All right. Um, so we're going to vote on this motion to send to to, uh, to uh, send a letter regarding uh, to restaurants regarding table heights. Okay, Cody, how do you vote? Yes. Terrific. Thank you, uh, Jim. How do you vote? Yes. Saren? Yes. Elise? Yes. And I will vote yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, next motion I need is about um, writing a letter to the TSO about the condition of the sidewalk on College Street about uh, and the, the dangerous conditions 
of the condition on the sidewalk on College Street. Um, somebody make a motion about that? I'll make a motion, but I'm not sure how to work that. Yeah, I move that we send a letter about the dangerous sidewalks on College Street. Okay, I have a second. I have a second. Okay, all right. So, um, Definitely. should we specify Wait. just one second? Should we specify the location of this sidewalk? Because if we say sidewalks with an S, they will just say, "Oh, we don't have funds for that." Okay, but so is right. Jim, I agree. Jim, can you specify exactly what? Are you talking yes. about the southeast corner, southwest corner, essentially of College Street and? Uh, it goes from Florence Bank. What is that? What kind of business is that? Is that there? the southwest side? Are you, well, that's College Street. And not on Street. With both sidewalks in that immediate area. Uh, there's no sidewalk south. once you get past that Florence Bank complex on that side, on the south side. The, right. the sidewalk continues, and there's much, much less deterioration the further away you get from the intersection. On the north mm -hmm. side? Yes. Okay, yeah. so we're talking about the north, west, and southwest corners of College Street and Southeast Street, correct? Correct, that's right. Okay. Yeah, okay. we should specify, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion to write a letter about the condition, the the uh, the uh, dangerous condition of the sidewalk um, at College Street, College Street, and both the north and south side of College Street at Southeast Street. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now I need a second. You made the motion, Elise, and somebody yeah. needs yeah. to second it. Second, please. I Sarah made the second. second. Yeah. Oh, Sarah did. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. So, all okay. in favor? Okay. Cody, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Uh, Jim? Yes. Elise? Yes. Saren? Yes. And I will vote yes. So, now we have two unanimous votes. Thank you for asking us to do motions, Pamela. Um, and all right, so uh, Jim, you're going to send me a letter. Saren, you're going to send me a letter. And I will send them on to Pamela after I look at them. And I think that might be everything for this meeting, right? Great. Um, you, one last thing, should you should just ask for public comment. We didn't ask for a general public okay. comment okay. before we adjourn. OK. Is there anyone here for uh, who would like to make a general public comment? Uh, there's no no one responding, so I think you're okay. um, good to. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So our next meeting is July. Oh boy. Let's see. June. It would have been June 11, so it would be July 8, because that is the no, second. July June. 9. July 9. Okay. Is that Monday? Are correct. It's Tuesday. You are correct. All right. July 9. And but we may not exist at that time, so stay yeah. tuned. We might be. Um, I don't know what the dis the dissolve date for this and the creation date is because we forgot to ask Athena. <laughs> um, so do you know any of that, Pamela? I do not, but I think that the timing will occur so that um, there would be no break in your work. So if it's it's likely that you might have your July meeting and then before the August meeting, the commission would be appointed. I doubt if there would be a, a break in service, so, but okay. I can inquire okay. about that. Great. Okay. I right. have well, one question before we adjourn, Myra. Uh, yeah. Uh, we right now have six members. Right. Right. So if we are going to go nine, Pamela will be the seventh person. So right. we have 
two vacancies now? Is that what we will is? have two vacancies? Yeah, and hopefully they there will be some interest. Um, but we've been understaffed for you know we went two years with five members, so we don't have to be fully membered as long as we have a quorum of the number of appointed of appointed members that we have. Okay. And, and okay. I'll just add that, but one of those vacancies by statute, we need to find someone who's a family member of someone with a disability. Right. So. right. All right. So there was it, a it, woman in that who applied wording, years ago, Liz. In that wording, so <gasps> for example, say I don't have any disability, I wish. Uh, so, and I don't know anyone, but with disability but say i work at a place that my heart is with doing changes to make our environment accessible so i cannot serve on that committee that kind of restricting lots of people from no, applying I, we're going to have we would be required to have five people with disabilities we would be Sorry, required guys, to I gotta have go. pamela all right Hi. thank Please, you thank Elise. you all right, we would be required to have five people with disabilities if we have nine members. We would be required to have a town appointed or elected official. That would be Pamela, that would be six. Then we would be required to have a family member of a person with disability, and then we could have two additional people. Mm -hmm. So I think your people would be protected there. Like Marty, um, Yeah. we have to try to find an architect. That was so useful. Um, I know. So I can talk to some people and see if I can figure out how we can do that. I know one architect I can contact. Hmm. Okay, but there are others. All right, All right. Um, we're done. All okay. right, thank you. I need right. a motion thank to so adjourn. Much. Need a motion to adjourn. Bye-bye. <laughs> No, you have to make a motion to adjourn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or we're going to be like in business until August. You have to, we have to adjourn. That's right. I move that we adjourn the meeting. I need a second. I second. Perfect. Thank you, Cody. All right. Um, all in favor of adjournment say yes. 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 <laughs> Three, four of us, all not in favor, all all opposed to adjournment. I don't hear anything. I guess we're adjourned. All right. Okay. All right. All Thank, right. You so much, Thank you so much, Pamela. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all for being here at a different time. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.